Hello, and welcome to Genealogy Coffee Break, brought to you by us, the genealogy librarians at the Center for Jewish History. My name is Sarah Belasco, and I'm here with my colleagues from the Center's Genealogy Institute and the Reading Room. Today, we'll show you what kinds of materials can help you in your genealogical search in the Sephardic Jewish Brotherhood of America collection held by our partner, the American Sephardi Federation, in their National Sephardic Library and Archives. During today's episode, feel free to send us your questions via the comments box and we'll answer them live. If we don't get to your question or you're not watching live, you can always email your questions to us at gi at cjh.org. We are also available for more intensive one-on-one -on -one Zoom consultations as needed. You may watch today's episode immediately after it airs, as well as all of our previous episodes at cjh.org forward slash genealogy coffee break. We also offer free group Zoom workshops. Group workshops are free for nonprofit organizations, religious organizations, and schools, and they don't have to be Jewish. Topics range from online genealogy basics to preserving your family photos and documents. For Jewish groups, workshops can be tailored to specific regions of the diaspora, including Ashkenazi, Sephardi, and Mizrahi. Let's start off with some history of the Sephardic Jewish Brotherhood of America. The Brotherhood began as the Salonican Brotherhood of America, Inc., which was founded in Manhattan in 1915 as a society to help Sephardic immigrants from Salonika become accustomed to life in the United States, as well as to have a place of Sephardic worship and community. It was incorporated on April 3rd, 1916. Over the years, the Salonican Brotherhood merged with various other Sephardic groups. A New Jersey branch was established in New Brunswick in 1917 partially in response to members' employment in New Jersey's war industries during World War I. By 1921, the Salonican Brotherhood leadership recognized that its focus and membership had moved beyond its roots as a society concerned with the interests of immigrants solely from Salonika. Subsequently, the society changed its name to the Sephardic Jewish Brotherhood of America, Inc. on December 10, 1921. The Brotherhood's original stated purpose was to promote the industrial, social, educational, and religious welfare of its members and to engage in philanthropic endeavors for the welfare of Sephardic immigrants. Two branches, one in Harlem and one on the Lower East Side, were established in 1922, as was a secret relief fund to assist needy families, and funds were raised to help the Jewish community of Salonika. By 1933, there were four branches, downtown in Brooklyn, Long Island, in Manhattan, New Brunswick, New Jersey, and the Bronx and Washington Heights. A scholarship committee was set up in 1934, which continues to give out monetary awards. In 1939, the Secret Relief Fund was renamed the Henry J. Parahia Funds for the needy in honor of the man who had provided so much of the money to help out needy members during the depression. In 1941, the Sephardic Jewish Brotherhood was a founding member, along with several other Sephardic organizations, of the Central Jewish Community of America, Inc., an institution intended to serve as a link with the world Jewish community and to promote Sephardic unity. After World War II, the Brotherhood organized a Jewish war veterans post, the Brotherhood Memorial Post number 454. On August 26, 1946, the American Sephardic Alliance, Inc., itself the result of several mergers between Sephardic organizations, merged with the Brotherhood, further unifying the American Sephardic community. The following year, on April 3, 1947, the Brotherhood merged with the Chandro Judeo Sephardi Inc., or the Sephardic Jewish Center Inc., to form the Sephardic Jewish Brotherhood of America. More members began retiring to the greater Miami area in the years after World War II, 
and some of these members helped to establish a benevolent society known as the Sephardic Jewish Brotherhood of Greater Miami. The leaders of the Sephardic Jewish Brotherhood of Greater Miami requested to become part of the Brotherhood, and on April 20, 1950, the Florida branch was established with its own cemetery plot. From 1949 to 1950, fundraising efforts began for a nursing home for Sephardim, the Sephardic Nursing and Rehabilitation Center, also known as the Sephardic Home for the Aged, which opened in 1947. Although the Brotherhood is affiliated with the Nursing and Rehabilitation Center, the center has always been an autonomous organization. In 1956, the Brotherhood's official publication, The Sephardic Brother, was launched to help keep members informed of the Brotherhood's activities. The Brotherhood's headquarters are currently in Forest Hills, Queens. Today, there are branches in New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Florida offering death and monument benefits, scholarships, and funds for the needy. The collection was acquired by the American Sephardi Federation in 2005 and is part of their National Sephardic Library and Archives. There are many uses for this collection in your genealogy research. These can include proof of Jewishness, family genealogy in general, finding graves of family members, proof of past membership, and applying for citizenship. Many people seek information from this collection in order to prove their Sephardic ancestry as a means to apply for Portuguese citizenship. If you would like further information, about the Portuguese citizenship process, you can watch my colleague Moriah Amit's recent program featuring a Portuguese citizenship lawyer on the Center for Jewish History's YouTube channel. The Sephardic Jewish Brotherhood of America also has a program to help people apply for Spanish or Portuguese citizenship. The Sephardic Jewish Brotherhood of America has been certified by the Spanish and Portuguese foreign ministries to help advise and provide supportive documentation for a person's application for citizenship based on their Sephardic heritage. You do not need to be a member of the Brotherhood to have them help you with your application. Let's go over some things to keep in mind. Don't get bogged down or tripped up by the dates in the collection. The series and subseries titles often have dates in them, which reflect the Sephardic Jewish Brotherhood of America's record keeping but these are not exactly the same as the dates of the materials. So, Series 1, Death Records, is divided into three subseries by date of the death of the member. But there can be materials dating from both before and after the date of death. So, someone who died in 1980, the date listed after the person's name, could have records going back to 1925, and someone who died in 1965 could have records in his file about his wife and or children who took over the membership for years after the husband's death. Also, be aware of various ways to spell first and last names, as people with similar spellings of last names may or may not be related. Check any way that you can think of to spell the name. Also, People did change their names and spellings, as can be seen with most of the center's collections. Information about marriages and conversions, particularly in the earlier records, can be found. A member who married a non-Jewish or sometimes a non-Sephardic woman had to provide conversion records if his wife wanted to be covered under the death benefits. At some point, more members were married to non-Jews so the rules changed somewhat. So the collection organization. There are five parts to the collection. The first is death records, which contain information about membership, gravestones, funeral expenses, and medical services. They are arranged alphabetically by last name. For series two, the terms used can be a little bit confusing. Resignations refers to people who did not renew their memberships. Transfer refers from moving up from a junior to a senior member. Children of members 
were no longer covered under their father's membership at age 18 and needed to become junior members. Junior members transferred to senior membership upon marriage or at age 24, whichever came first. Expulsion is for people who did not pay their dues. In addition to information about membership and dues, researchers can find information about immigration and naturalization, marriages, conversions, and divorces. Series three contains scholarship information, so if you know that you have a family member who received a scholarship from the Sephardic Jewish Brotherhood of America, you can find information about that there. Series four contains information about monetary assistance given out to needy members of the Brotherhood. The materials consist mainly of applications and correspondence. Members were required to fill out fill out an application for aid each year, detailing their financial status. Although the Secret Relief Fund was founded in 1922 and renamed the Henry J. Pariah Fund for the Needy in 1939, most of these records date from the 1980s and 1990s. The Sephardic Jewish Brother Newsletter is the last series in this collection. It contains information about birth and death announcements, engagements, anniversaries, marriages, brotherhood events, the president's message, holiday information, scholarship awards and funds, editorials, letters to the editor, editor the ladies auxiliary, news of social groups, election announcements and results, community news, veterans information, and member benefits. A lot can be found in the newsletter. While the center is closed, you may still email our reading room librarians at inquiries at cjh.org to request reproductions of records you need. Due to privacy issues, you must be a relative of the person you are requesting records for, and we can only provide photocopies. If you have questions, you may write to us now via the comments box. If we don't get to your question during this episode, we will respond to you by private message. Or if you're not watching live, please feel free to email us your questions at gi at cjh.org. For updates on this and other Center for Jewish History programs, please join our email list at bit.ly forward slash cjhe news. If you enjoyed this program, we hope you will consider making a small donation at cjh.org forward slash donate now. Any amount helps us put on programs like this one. Thank you for watching and participating. We look forward to seeing you again next Tuesday for the next episode of Genealogy Coffee Break. Until then, good luck in your search and enjoy your week.